This is a day in the life of a freelance translator. So, you know, prepare yourselves for a thrill ride. I wouldn't really say... Church. Okay, yeah. This is me. I just pretended to wake up and I dropped my phone apparently. <laughs> <laughs> I am a 30 year old Swedish guy who lives in Stockholm and work as a freelance translator. I've done it for a while. I started freelancing in 2017 and except for one year of full-time Japanese studies, uh, I haven't done anything else since. I start the day by making coffee, otherwise my mum would be very disappointed in me. My mum really likes coffee and feels that her kids need to drink coffee. Anyway, I usually drink it while either watching YouTube or going through my daily Anki cards for Japanese. I translate English into Swedish and I just study Japanese for the fun of it. I don't really have any professional ambitions uh, at all. When most of the coffee is defeated, I take a deep breath, realign my nuts and open my mailbox. I'm not sure about other translators, but I always only ever communicate through emails with agencies and contacts. I never have any phone or video calls with anyone. My work is done in complete silence, except for the occasional orgasmic moan when I really nail a sentence, you know. Okay, so let's see what I'm up to, I suppose. Uh, good morning. Good morning. Hello, hello. Do you work from home every day? Most days, yes. Sometimes I take my laptop to, you know, a cafe around the corner and work from there. Does it ever get lonely? Yes, it does. But then I just go on to Discord and harass people there. That usually does. Okay, so what's your routine for working? Right. <laughs> right. So I go through my list of emails that I've received during the night and, you know, accept any project offers that I'm interested in taking on, then tell the rest of them to go fuck themselves. Most of the time, though, I just log on to a couple of agency websites that I am part of their teams of translators, and then there's a list of projects for me to choose from. That was for sure different in the beginning, though, because when I started off, I had to, you know, actually email people and ask for projects rather than just getting them sent to you, to me. But those days are over. Do you like doing other stuff while working? Uh, yes, I usually have something on in the background all the time. Currently I am, for instance, listening to the Last of the Mohicans <laughs> soundtrack, because I think it's, you know, suitably epic for the uh, UI translation strings that I'm currently working on. I'm recording these questions later, you're just guessing at the answers, right? Mm, yes. This doesn't really seem to add much to the video, do you think? Um, I'm a big fan of hummus. Okay, now you're just being silly for no reason. I don't know how else it would it would be. I had a constant dive. <laughs> okay, let's move on. I need to work. Stop bothering me. Goodness. <laughs> okay, so we're done with work for the day. Yay. This is usually how much I need to work in order to stay afloat, sort of. I have not worked proper full-time since about 2017. You know, this is the main reason why I really like this job is because I can decide how many hours I work every week. If I need more money, then I can just work some more. I'll answer more maybe like common questions about freelancing as a translator a uh, bit later on in the video, but uh, the pay, hmm if we're gonna talk about that. You know, as I said, this is enough for me to stay afloat. I work about 20 hours a week. It's sort of intense work though. Like it's actually focused work because like if, if I compare this to when I worked in an office, for instance, even though I was there for eight hours a day, the amount of time you spend actually like focusing on work was maybe five <laughs> or something. Like, it was, you know, the rest of the time you're either just work, like waiting for projects to come down the pipeline or fucking around with coworkers or something, you know. So when I say that I work for like 20 hours a week, that's actual like focused, doing nothing else, just working, you know. But yeah, the pay is pretty good. It's a bit tricky to say, really, it depends on the project, but my sort of average hourly rate is way higher than I've ever had at a, you know, working as a translator for a company. But that said, that is mostly because I am <clears throat> Swedish. Swedish is a small language compared to, let's say, like French or Spanish. So therefore there are fewer Swedish translators. Therefore the competition is not as high. Therefore the rates for Swedish translations are higher than 
the average rate for like you know French or Spanish. The average Swedish word is worth more than the average French word, <laughs> as it should be. You know, you can look up the different rates uh, for different languages online. I recommend the uh, website prozy.com. I think I think they have like an aggregate aggregate for like the the average rate per word for different languages. Okay, so now before lunch, I'm gonna go work out. Yeah, yeah, love a spend on it. I'm probably not going to show that though, mainly because I'm self-conscious, but also because I don't want to, you know, break the internet. Maybe I'll blur it out or something. I don't know. Okay, workout time. Okay, I just made some lunch. I usually have a bit more than this, but I, since I'm filming this fucking video, I <laughs> don't know, I don't have much time. I'm gonna eat and watch something on YouTube, probably. So while I'm having lunch in the background, I thought I would go through some more details about what it's like being a freelance translator, how I became one and so on. So I became a freelance translator by having a BA in English literature and by just being incredibly Swedish. <laughs> so after I got my BA, I moved to London again uh, and just applied for you know jobs that I thought I could get now that I had a BA sort of and I just happened to find one a QA localizations tester for Testronic which was a game translation localization company I started out translating Farmville 2 fuck yes <laughs> and then after that I moved on to a couple of different companies and then I had enough experience to start my own freelancing business but what does it take to be a freelance translator surely if you can do it anyone can as uh, so that's a good point. The only thing you really need to be good at is writing in your own language because as long as you understand the source I think that's good enough and you also need to know all the boring <laughs> like rules. Is there a space between the number and the percentage sign for instance in your target language? There is in Swedish and I didn't know that to begin with. I made so many mistakes though in the beginning so <laughs> as long as you can sort of get a foot in I suppose you can learn as you go as well. But did you do any courses or anything? Do you have a portfolio? Uh, no, my CV was enough for me, my work experience. If you don't have any work experience, but you still want to sort of jump into becoming a freelancer, I suppose having some sort of portfolio is gonna help. Maybe a website where you show it off, sort of. I know also that there are courses you can take, like short translation courses that you pay some money to do. Those things can probably help as well. And then I suppose in order to get a portfolio, you might just like, you know, if you know of someone who has a website, you might offer to translate it for free or something. I never had to do that though, because I just, yeah, as I said, I jumped in at sort of an entry level shitty localizations tester <laughs> which is not really a translator to begin with but it's a sort of first step if you really want to become a freelance translator i think as long as you're pretty good at your native language and as long as you understand another language uh, you definitely have the skills then at that point it's just a matter of getting you know the experience or getting a foot in the door yeah all right i'm gonna go and take a shower ah okay you do that okay now while i am in the shower uh, I thought I would introduce this video's sponsor, Vormor and Vormor's Scan Translator. So essentially all that I just said about, you know, getting work experience and, you know, education in order to become a freelance translator and really knowing your target language and stuff, you can throw all that out the window, really. And all you need to do is to buy this one. It is a AI-driven pen thing that you can scan texts with in order to get translations into lots of different languages. All you do is just hold it down against the thing, drag it along the text. The meaning of life surely has to be death. Very good. All right, so it, it got the original uh, English text down correctly. And then let's see the translation. <laughs> That's amazing. It works. So the meaning of life surely has to be death. Meaning and believe it must have been dead. And it works beautifully. Goodness. It's got a microphone as well. Uh, so uh, let's try that out with a friend of mine and see if we can do some, you know, audio translations as well. Okay. Tor, du kan inte svenska. Uh, no comprendo sueco. Precis. Uh, hey Tor, jag vet inte vart jag är någonstans. Kan du hjälpa mig, tack? Of course, young man. You are in Stockholm. Welcome to Sweden. <laughs> there is a link to Vormor in the description and you get a discount as well. I think it is 10%. need to double check that <laughs> if you follow my link as well. So please do. Thank you very much for the sponsor, Vormor. Uh, the, the, I think I'm done with the shower now.
Okay, so I am clean, done with work, and have had lunch and worked out. Jesus, how productive. So the rest of the day I usually work on, you know, either videos or Patreon related things. Or I stream on Twitch, which is what I'm going to do today. I'm doing a Pokemon playthrough in Japanese currently. Sort of basic level immersion, I suppose. Writing down words that I don't understand and creating Anki cards for them and stuff. It's really fun, goodness. I understand maybe like 50%, but still. You should come join. Okay, post fun. <laughs> like planning and and effort. <laughs> Amazing! Pocky with the 12 months anniversary time. Fucking hell. What a thing to celebrate. That's crazy. <laughs> You've officially dealt with me for a whole year. Amazing. Julian's over to all the award. That's right. <laughs> the dick chick has arrived. So I found this. Or these uh, fossils, you bastard. That's it, Tomo. Boku no da. Both are mine. Okay. Fuck yeah. I understood an entire sentence. Goodness me. Okay. So that was a fun stream. Wow. I feel as if I sound disingenuous when I say that. Uh, but it was a fun stream, goodness. So now, for the next couple of hours, I'll probably maybe work a bit more. So that's... that's fun. Hmm. Let's do that, goodness. You need to have discipline as a freelancer. <laughs> so naturally what I did instead of working was... I did upload the, the Twitch VOD to the YouTube channel that I have for Twitch VODs. But then of course I just played bass for like an hour. Hopefully my bass playing here is bad enough so that the original music doesn't get copyrighted in this. <laughs> Having achieved absolutely fuck all since the stream, I thought I deserved some social relaxation. So I decided to go to the local pub around where I live and hang out with all my friends. Since I don't have any colleagues as a freelancer, going out and meeting people I find is really important. So this is how I end my day. I just not gonna do, I'm, after this I'm just gonna go home. So thank you very much for watching. I hope this video was interesting for those of you who want to become freelancers. I think it's a great job for sure. Uh, I might make more videos talking about the pros and cons and stuff later if you have any questions about it. Uh, leave them down in the comments, I suppose. And finally, thank you to the Patreons, especially Anna, for suggesting the line, the meaning of life surely has to be death. <laughs> Lovely. Okay, puss puss.